For criminal media's policy, I'm Tabi Shumulikai. Joining me today is author Litabo Malika here to unpack her book titled Smashing the Patriarchy, A Women's Testament. Your book, Smashing the Patriarchy, explores the roots of patriarchy and its devastating consequences. So what did you find were its effects, particularly in relation to gender-based violence? For me, the effects were just on women in general and girl children. Mm -hmm. And what I've done in the book, I spoke about gender-based violence mm -hmm. in totality. And I tried to categorize it in number of issues that uh, affect women. I started off with the, uh, explaining what patriarchy is mm -hmm. in my introduction and uh, went on to explain where patriarchy originated. Mm -hmm. And I uh, also went on to say that uh, even though patriarchy is a factor, in, 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 in oppression and subjugation of women. Women themselves are their worst enemies. That's what I said. Mm -hmm. And my, my argument is that we cannot emphasize on eradicating gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. The effect of gender-based violence is as a result or a consequence of patriarchal system. Mm -hmm. And therefore we must start with the root cause. Mm -hmm. I am saying there is no way that we will ever, ever eradicate gender-based violence without this building patriarchy. Can you tell us about the research involved? How did you go about researching for this book? What I did is that I rely entirely on the voices of people, be in articles in the newspapers. I went through the literature regarding patriarchy in particular, but as far as gender-based violence, I rely entirely on articles, because what I wanted to do was to document all incidents of gender-based violence. And if you can look at uh, volume four and five, that's where I used articles most of the time, where I'm saying here, we've got the faces of people who are victims, they want to be called victors. Mm -hmm. Um, survivors, but I must say that when I documented these atrocities, all what I wanted to do was to say I want to pay tribute to them at the same, at the same time, just to say we must never forget them in the fight as we go along fighting, because I believe that women will fight patriarchy and they'll win it one day. So it's gender-based violence. But we shouldn't forget those that suffered, especially those that lost their lives. So I was saying I'm going to concretize them, put them in one place, so that whoever reads these books will see the devastating consequences of patriarchy in the form of gender-based violence. What inspired you to focus on this particular issue? Witnessing women dying every day in numbers, I came across an article where they said every 38 minutes a woman is murdered mm. by either a stranger or a partner. So that really motivated me to write this book. I realized that someone must do something and it is me who must do something about it. When I started writing, I just wanted to focus on gender-based violence. But I realized that there is no point of us, you know, talking about gender-based violence without, you know, visiting the root cause of this quality uh, pandemic. We must start from somewhere else for us women to understand that we are faced with a monster and our fight is complex. It's not, it, do, it won't be easy, but we must understand that we have to start somewhere. And Mrs. Malika, talk to us about why you say that society is easily brainwashed by lies peddled by patriarchy, socialization, culture and religion. If you understand where, where patriarchy originates, for me, uh, patriarchy is a, an oppression. Remember, in traditional society, we had a division of labors. 
women did one thing, the men did one thing, but it was never meant to oppress and subjugate women. So I said it started with the story in the Bible. Adam, Eve, and the rape. That's where it started. And I said the author of patriarchy feared women. When she first realized how, how, how strong, wise, and powerful women are, he, he got frightened. And that's when she started with peddling the lies about the status of women in society. In fact, she, when she started, she came up with gender roles. And then what she did is that she made a point that these roles start in the family by starting women. And women, aware or not aware, they perpetuated their own oppression by teaching girls to imitate them as mothers. Meanwhile, elevating boys to a superiority status. And I said, this author didn't end up there. She realized that um, she must perfect this plan. She started growing patriarchy, multiple tentacles. And those tentacles are in the form of socialization. They are in the form of tradition and they are form of culture. Those are the main tentacles of patriarchy. But over and above, he made sure that he must grow branches as well on these main tentacles in the form of sexism, stereotype, manhood, masculinity, and, and the likes. There are many, but the idea was to protect men because for, for him, he realized that if he doesn't protect men, men will never be able to emerge and be what they think they are. Powerful, as the Bible told them that women should be your subservient. According to him, women must be men subservient and men must be superior. That's what she was trying. That I call it the will of the plan, the will of motion in making sure that patriarchy succeed. And he even succeeded in convincing the whole society about the status of women in society. Mm -hmm. And he even succeeded in ensuring that religion drives women oppression. And on top of that, he realized that the tentacles won't be enough on its own. She started peddling lies about women be inferior, and those lies just spread like wildfire, and the whole society believed it, including women. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what is the role played by women in the fight against gender oppression meted out on women by patriarchy globally? Remember, uh, when women realize that, you know, patriarchy is distorting the truth about them, they started to realize that they have to liberate themselves, flowing from feminism to social justice activists. We've got four waves of feminism, all of them trying to deal with patriarchy, dismantling patriarchy in all the sectors of society, economic feminism, you know, social feminism, political feminism. They were all trying to ensure that Patriarchy is dismantled, but unfortunately, a majority of women never joined in the fight. That's why we are still here today. So with that, Ms. Malika, do you think the women of this country are ready to lead this nation? They don't have much choice. Gender-based violence is compelling women to do that. Just that. I do not see, unless we, we, we are saying that we want to fly, one by one, fly into... Uh, this tornado, I call it tornado of extinction, unless we want to find that at the end of the day there is no woman in this country. I am saying that women do not have much choice this time. 
I, I, I still don't, do not understand that even today, nothing, nothing major is happening. Remember, we just protest, campaign, protest and, and campaign every time when a woman is, is killed. But we forget. Down the line, we forget. We wait for another woman to die just like that. Some are even not documented, so we'll never know. Mm -hmm. But until, until we realize that we have to fight, I'm saying we have to patch GBB from the belly of patriarchy. In East South Africa, we've got so many gender justice activists. They are trying their best. But what about the majority of, of, of South Africans we, that couldn't just see that we really have to stand up and fight? Women can only fight if we become united. Because we are very, very divided. And that's where men take advantage of us. Unless we unlearn the patriarchal language of how we, we talk to each other, we speak to each other, and we unlearn the patriarchal value, I call it silence. We must start talking. We must unlearn all this endurance that we have to endure, you know, everything, including back breaking chores, including, you know, insults including violence and including justice in, in general. We must unlearn those things. That's why I always go back to patriarchy. We must unlearn the teaching that patriarchy taught us. South African women are very courageous. If they can just realize that and understand that, all what we need is unity. We are very courageous. And then we mustn't be discouraged by the fact that patriarchy is still alive and kicking in, in, in other countries, Western countries, democratized countries, you know. We can set a tone to the whole world to say this thing, this monster can, can be eaten bit by bit. Women have been trying to eat it bit by bit. And women of this country, compelled by GPB, we must finish it. Mm -hmm. And the South African government has introduced targeted interventions tailored to the needs of gender-based violence victims. Three legislations were signed into law by President Cyril Ramaphosa. So do you think government is doing enough to fight this problem? No, categorically no. Those, so those, those uh, laws are useless, very useless. My problem is that the emphasis on fighting GPV. The president will never mention patriarchy. Are you aware? <laughs> she never mentioned patriarchy because she doesn't want to get rid of patriarchy because patriarchy benefits them. And they know that there is no way that we can get rid of GPV. There is just no way. As long as men have this patriarchal mentality, power, control, dominance over women, will never, never, never eradicate GPV. So those laws are so useless. And I was just saying, I don't remember them doing any public participation. I mean, um, going around, talking to women, asking them what is that they want, what is that they do not want, what is to put on those bills. No, they just over their heads decide on what women want. And what, what must be done, what must be done is for the president to add law patriarchy. He must make sure that whatever is related to patriarchy is an offense. Starting with sexism, the same way they've done with racism. Until then, I do not see them winning this battle. And I don't think they are intending to win it. And they haven't done enough for the whole 30 years. They haven't done enough. Our um, neighbors have got a solution. Like Botswana, they've got a solution for the killing of women. Because uh, femicide once visited them in the most horrible way. And the president then just said, you stop and stop now. You kill a woman, I kill you. I am not going to send you to jail. I will just hang you. 
So um, I, I, I really have a problem with what our government is trying to do for me just a political exercise until they take these things, I mean, gender-based violence, patriarchy to start with, so it's gender-based violence. We're not going anywhere. And we have to push them. We have to push them to do something. Remember how women push them to come out and talk about G GPV when uh, Unene uh, was killed? She was forced by women to come out and speak about gender-based violence, otherwise she was not going to. And lastly, Mrs. Malega, you encourage women to use their militant stance to their advantage. So what are you hoping to achieve with this book? I'm urging women just to rise up. The reason why I put this book in the manner that I did, I, I, I was just hoping that everyone in this country will read this eight volumes so that they understand what is that has to be done. I urge women to rise up. I expect them to rise up and fight patriarchy. So it's the eradication of gender-based violence. That is my expectation. I expect women going forward to mobilize, to unite, and to rise up. The starting point is for us to write our own script. In that script, we must say that no more fighting these issues in a piecemeal. We want to fight them holistically. We want to take all these issues, all these issues that demean women, culture, those, are, those that are embedded in culture, tradition, uh, how people were socialized. We really, really have to. That's why I call it a testament, and this testament must be our book. This is the book that women must, must have in every family if women are serious in fighting the issues that oppress and subjugate them. That was Letabo Maleka speaking to Krima Media's polity about smashing the patriarchy.